All right, what's up, everyone? It's Matt Rosick. This will be the second work in progress on the 1 6 scale vinyl kits of Quark and Odo. So, um, my client watched the uh, first work in progress and enjoyed it, and he asked me if I was going to attach the figures to the base, and I was thinking about doing that, and I think I will. Not permanently, but what I think we're going to do is fill the bases so they're solid, and then put a pin through each of their one of their foot. So, um, a couple other little things I did off video is I I filled their hands. His head's not attached, obviously. I'm gonna paint paint that separately. I filled their hands and I put a little pin in it. Just a brass rod. And I'm not sure, but I may leave them. I'll probably end up gluing them in, but like, especially on a core, because the way his hands fit and he's holding his glass, I'll probably glue those in. But I may leave it a little loose on Odo so that we can turn the hand or I don't know. Maybe I'll just glue them in, I'm not sure. But I put a pin in there just so it's got something to attach to and hold in place. So, I thought I heard something loose in there. So those guys are nice and solid now. Nice, got some weight to them. So I think what I'm gonna do to fill these is I'm just gonna use some Bondo body filler, which I use all the time. But before I do that, I'm going to, um, before I do any filling, I want to protect the edge, the outside edge of these. I don't want to get filler on them and mess them up. So I'm just going to take some masking tape, like this. I'm just going to tape around the edge, just to protect it. So I don't get filler, because it'll be, you know, the filler could, um, resin but the resin that I have on hand it's like a 24 hour cure resin really slow curing um, my wife uses it for her art projects and I don't want to wait that long so I can do this with body filler pretty quickly and it'll work just as well I'm gonna tape it off that way if I get any drips or anything I don't care if I get tape on the on this lip because I'll get sanded anyway and I got my body filler here and just some Bondo. Bondo's just a brand name, I say all the time. Automotive body filler. But Bondo's just a brand name. A lot of people just say Bondo in general, and that's what I do. I just, I just use Bondo, and it's, I'm referring to a body filler. So I'll just do one of these off cam on camera because it's going to be the same process on the other one. And we need a hardener and a spreader. Cream hardener, body floor spreader, and I need, I just use, I just use scrap cardboard for mixing this. That is fine in the box that I'm not using. I'm trying to use it. I really bought myself a Bondo board, which is simply just a plastic. It's like a vinyl board that you can use. So I'm just gonna get some filler out on this. And this may take two rounds of this. It will heat up a little bit, so I don't want to get too hot, so I, I may do this in two. So I don't want to warp the plastic. I need a good amount, and you can uh, control how how warm it gets by how much harder. The more harder you put in, the hotter it'll get as it cures. Um, but you, and it also will affect um, how fast it cures. So I'm using a little bit of hardener. Normally you'd use a lot more than that. So I'm gonna mix this up real well. I may add a little more hardener, we'll have to see how the color it turns. This Bondo in particular, I've had this can for about a year, so it's a little on the stiffer side. It's usually a little creamier than this. I do have my Evercoat that I used to, but that's an, it's an, ex, that's an expensive body filler. Like this can of Bondo is like, like $15 or something like that. A little quart of the Evercoat filler is like 35, 40 bucks. 
but it's super, um, it's a lot more viscous, so it's it goes on smoother, and it's much easier to sand. So like in the automotive, when I used to paint cars, you would do your um, body fill with Bondo, kind of get everything just the way you want it, and as a very final skim coat, you'd use the Evercoat because it's expensive, and it's really meant for filling small dents and large sanding scratches from your body work. So this is looking pretty good. This will take a while to dry because I don't have a whole lot of hardener in here. But I'm going to do this in two rounds. So I'm going to put this in the base. This may be enough. We'll see. Looks it nice. And stuff does stink pretty good. Throw it in here. So I'm going to put this in, I'll let this set up pretty good, and then I'll do another round so this part doesn't have to be real pretty. Let that dry and we'll come back. Okay, so I got both bases filled. They're not pretty. We're gonna let these dry nice and hard and then we'll sand them smooth and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, so these have dried nice and hard. Now the fun part of sanding. So I've got some 80 grit sandpaper on a sanding block and this one we're gonna start with. And it's gonna get pretty messy pretty quick, but let's do it by hand. I could like use an orbital. Orbital sander, but I'm just going to do it by hand. I'm actually going to sand this over my trash can. So I'm going to sand it with 80 grit, and then I'll take it down to like 400 or 600. And that way, when I prime it, it'll be nice and smooth on the bottom. So I'm going to sand these smooth, and we'll take a look at them. Okay, so I sand these down with 80 grit, and I'm not sure if you can see, but I got a couple little spots here, like one here, a couple little areas here and there, more on the circular one for out uh, for cork that aren't quite filled in. So I'm going to go in there with my Evercoat, the more expensive stuff. I'm just about just about out of and we're just going to fill those voids that way we have a nice smooth bottom and it just looks it looks prettier so you mix up the same way this Evercoat's actually actually um, <laughs> that's this for a while it's not quite as runny as it used to be it used to be super runny but it's I've had it for a while, I think it's dried out a little bit. That's more than enough. And use the same same partner. I think that's enough. Like I do? Yeah, should be. I'm gonna mix this a little hotter, meaning a little more harder, so dries quicker. It's usually runnier than this, but like I said, I've had this container for over a year. And if you get any air in it, then it starts to drown a little bit. Uh, 
that. Process like a cake. Pushing down on it pretty good to get in those voids. Always make it a little higher than you need so you can sand it down. This should sand a little bit easier than bonding. I don't know, now it's kind of been dried out. I'm not sure how easy it'll sand, but it usually sands much easier than bonding. The bonding dries really hard. Okay, now it'll sand smooth next time around. On this guy, I just got a couple little voids on this side. I sanded it until I saw the edge of the plastic, and that let me know I had it down as far as I can go before I have to go back and do any more filling. So hopefully this will, I got a piece of dirt in there. You know you got dirt when you're spreading and you get these little tracks in it. So hopefully it's starting to harden up on me. So I gotta put this down. Let that dry up nice and hard. I'm gonna sand it smooth. Uh, I won't record that. It'll be 80 grit, and then I'll go down to 180, then 240, and then probably finish up with 4600. All right, so I got those filled and sanded smooth. I still have like some teeny tiny little inclusions I'm gonna fill with just some spot putty later, but for right now they're like 99% there. It looks really good. Even though it's on the bottom, I just wanna make sure it looks as good as possible. So um, yeah. So, now what you got to do is to find out where you want to place your figure. Porker is pretty easy. He just goes right here in the middle. Um, now, I don't want to drill a hole through the Deep Space Nine logo, I don't think. I don't think it matters. He's going to be standing up right here anyway. So, what I'll probably do is I'll probably, his left, his right foot sits a little flatter. So, I'll probably pin his right foot and then his left heel will be flat. Um... I think I put them back. Do I center them or I put them towards the back? I'm thinking I put them like right, like right here. And then, let's see, Odo. So Odo's got that sleeping pod, but the sleeping pod doesn't actually fit on the base. It's too big. I got a little bit of filler on the top side. I need to take that off. I ended up uh, covering the hole, you know, initially I just had the edges covered, but then I was getting my fingers on this, I was getting dirty on it, so I'll take that off here in a little while. So for Odo, his left foot sits flat, so I'm going to put him on the base kind of like in his head. Let's see how his head is turned. His head is turned a little bit to his left, so... Let's see how we want to put him on there. I think Odo I'm going to put right here. He's centered. Oops, you know, I'm sorry. I think we're going to put him in the, on the base like this. So he's centered. Let's bring it down. So typically I would outline the foot in a black Sharpie, but this is a black base. A black Sharpie may show up on it. Let's see. Uh, I have one up here. I should. I wonder if lead would show up with a pencil. So I'm going to outline his left foot. Basically his heel. I'm going to put the pin through his heel. So I'm just outlining the back side of his heel here. And let's see if I see a line. I do. It's very... So I don't let you see it, maybe. See it right there. So there's the outline. So I'm going to put a pin right in the middle of that spot there. 
And I think for him, for these guys, I'll do, um, I don't think it to be a huge number. One eighth is probably more than enough just to keep them from falling over. So I'll use a one eighth inch brass rod. Get my drill bits out here. Get a one eighth inch bit. Now I don't have a drill press. I wish I did. So I'm going to have to just um, try to drill this as straight as I can. But you'll see what we do here in a second. So I have a spot marked. I'm actually going to put a little scratch there so I can see it better. Straight down, just like that. And I have a one eighth inch hole, and it's okay that it goes through all the way. I need a couple clamps. I'm gonna clamp them down and drill from the bottom up. him and that spot sorry I'm off camera but I need to be able to see straight down on him so I can clamp his foot in the right spot So now I have his foot clamped there. I'm going to go ahead and clamp this other foot down just so I've got another. Actually, we're okay. So now I'm going to flip it over. And I'm sorry, I'm going to do this off camera. I'm going to go from the bottom. heel right there I'm gonna go up into the putty I had in there earlier and now we're gonna glue this rod in do, 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 do. what I like to do is always put in a couple I right, let's sand it first let's scuff up this brass it's got something we has got something to stick to that and then we're just going to do a test fit first Get a pair of pliers okay so it's going in a little at an angle so what we'll do is we'll bend the rod once it's in there so he sits so he stands straight make sure he stands straight i'm not too worried about that right now Oops, sorry almost knocked the camera over So I'll just I'll show you this process. It'll, it'll be the same for quark. Like so. 
I'm gonna go ahead with a little kicker. So now that rod's up in up here into his ankle. And it doesn't have to be super long. I'm gonna cut it. Well, let's see how thick this base is. It only has to be like a half inch. Yeah, not even half of an inch long, so I'm just kind of get kind of guesstimate. Actually, what I want to do, actually what I want to do, so I'm gonna put them on the. I'm gonna put this on. I'm having a brain fart. I'm gonna cut this quite a bit longer than I need. And the reason is I want to be able to put them on the base and see if he stands straight and if not I need to bend the rod a little bit so but I need a little okay so right now he needs to come forward which means the rod needs to bend backwards so I need to bend this rod just a little bit Now you put him on the base, he's sitting pretty flat. Yeah, you can push him down really nice and tight. And you can see his, he's standing pretty damn darn flat. I want to get a little more precise, I can bend it. The rod will look crooked coming out of his foot, but it'll be at the right angle for him to sit to stand correctly. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And I can even, now that I have this in here, I can mark when the rod needs, brass, the rod needs to be cut off, and I'll cut it just below that. Now we got a nice heavy base pegged in there looking good so we'll do the same thing to odo and then um the last bit of prep will be to do the putty work so we'll do that here in a little while <laughs> all right so continuing on i got a few minutes here before i gotta take off for the day so um worked on the filling the bases last night and you can see all those little red spots i think let me reduce my exposure so that's some spot putty i just kind of put over and you know this it's pretty damn close to being perfect on the bottom. You're not going to see it, but you know, I'll get that smooth anyway. So sand that down. I sanded it down to uh, 400, so that'll take primer and paint real nice. These are a little dirty right now, but we'll wash them before we paint them. So I'll put those to the side. We've got the pins in both their feet. Now what we got to do is do some uh, seam filling. The hands are loose. Don't worry about any gaps on the hands. So let's work on Quark because he's a little bit easier to do. But this will be the same process on Odo, so I'm just going to show one. Uh, so it looks like I don't need to do any gap filling around. Well, oh, I forgot. Quark's feet are molded in, so nothing there. Um, a little bit maybe on the waist and then his arms. So we need A's for that. So I'm just going to take... Again, A's is a two-part epoxy putty. I'll take equal parts of it. You know, I'm pretty close to being equal. A little more of this. That looks pretty good. It's going to be one at a time. I'm going to mix it up. I like to roll up my hands, fold it, and then roll again. I 
Now we get my sculpting tools out. I'm not a sculptor, but I do have a few tools. And these should be perfect for what I got to do. They're actually dirty. I got dried on the babes on them. I think these two will do fine. So I'm gonna roll this up. And I'm gonna fill. I'm gonna do his waist and his arms. And then we'll probably have to do a little. Once this dries overnight, probably a little sanding just to smooth it out. Odo will take more because I got to do his arms, his waist, and his feet. His feet may be okay. The arms will be the most work on these guys. We have to do a little bit of sculpting on the top part of their shoulders. Alright. So make sure that this is a consistent color. Like so. And I'm just going to roll this out pretty thin. I'm just going to, for his waist, I'm just going to come in here. I'm just going to use this tool to kind of push it up in there. I'm just pushing it into the into the seam so it fills it in and you can see any excess just kind of falls off. Tool and some water, and I'll just help smooth it out. You don't need a whole lot, and this, this, this there's very little to fill, but fits pretty good on this. A little more towards the back and the front. pretty at first we're just trying to fill the gap at first Here a little bit. And I like to use a wet Q-tip also. Actually that didn't work so well there. I actually took some of the took some of it out of the the gap because it pushed pulled it out. So go back and put it back in. Just 
most of the work on these is in the prep. Getting them ready to paint. thumb and some water here to help smooth it out. here I need to fill in I think. And I really won't know how well this is done until I get primer on it. That's a new bell T. See if your work is good or if you gotta go back and do a little bit more. Usually I don't get it all the very first try. Usually you have to do a little bit more after I get some primer on it. off that you can. Okay, so the waist, the waist looks pretty good. Now for the arms. We'll be able to get this all done here in a second. I have to take off, but for the arms, we're going to kind of do the same thing. I'm going to sand the shoulders of hair. Especially on Odo, I've got to do a little bit of sculpting, I think, to get the shoulder looking right. And Quark's got this... Um, embellishment on his sleeves. I gotta be careful that I don't fill in.
It's not gonna look real pretty at first on the shoulders, but once I go and sand them and stuff, they'll look good. So here I'm just trying to get the excess out of that little decoration on this sleeve. This is a good spot for a wet Q-tip. Basically, it's this process. You fill, smooth, fill, smooth, fill, smooth. Get as neat as you can. And like I said, I probably have to do a little bit of sanding and sculpting on the tops of these shoulders to get them smooth. That won't be the end of the world. Kind of a slow process. Especially when you're trying to get putty in an area and not obscure detail like on these sleeves.
So I'm just going to do this this part on camera and then do, I'll do all the other pretty work off camera because look at the, it's the same process. I'm slow and tedious. I like a Q-tip because it's like it's just the right shape for kind of softening edges of the putty and stuff. I have a little bit of sanding to do along the edge here with the putty to, to get the blend smoothly into the body. Hopefully it won't be too much. Some of my hobby key tips, the ones that were pointy. But I'm out of those. So it's looking pretty good. Again, I won't know until I get primer on this to see what it looks like. But I am going to build up the top here a little bit more. Because the top two surfaces aren't exactly even. The top of the shoulder is a little uh, not exactly lined up, so I'm going to fill this up a little bit and then we'll sand it down to get the right shape. And I'm constantly wiping off the, any of that excess because any of this like excess right here that's got putty in it that'll dry hard as a rock and you don't want to deal with that if it's caught in a detail or something like that so I 
I'm kind of off camera a little bit here. Sometimes I just need to bring the piece closer to my face. That's why I'm, you can't see it sometimes. transition here that's give me some problems it's a good thing about this age that's very workable for a long time time for right now anyway but you can get the idea We'll do some light sanding on the shoulder to kind of shape it up a little more. But that's kind of the gist of filling these seams and stuff, these gaps. So that's that process. So I got to do that to all the other areas. So that'll take a while. A super fast thing to do. If I can do that, get that done today. It's on the weekend. I'm trying to do a little work here between soccer games. If I can get the putty work done today, then tomorrow, Monday, I can hopefully get that sanded down and everything and some primer and it'll be good to start painting pretty quick I got this shoulder again built up quite a bit more than I need so I got some room to sand it down and shape it so I'll do the rest and then tomorrow we'll sand okay so this A's has dried, has dried overnight I didn't get a chance to do the other other putty work on the air on the other arm so I'm gonna try that I'm gonna try to do the putty work on the other areas with uh, Bondo because <laughs> I really want to get the putty work done today so I get some primer on it. I'm just showing you right now what I'm doing is I'm going through here and I'm sanding this with some 80 grit. Now this is pretty aggressive but I've got quite a bit of, uh, of A's on here and on, I want to shape this shoulder pretty quick. So this has been dried over, 20, over 24 hours so it's like rock hard. So I've got 80 grit pretty aggressive but this stuff sands um, pretty well. So I'm just using 80 grit to kind of get the, the shape that I want and then I'll go back in with finer grits to 
fix the damage because 80 grit is really aggressive on this stuff. Maybe some pretty significant sanding scratches, but sorry, by the time we're done, you won't be able to tell. It's just like, just like paint body work on a car I used to do. What I don't want to do is hit the this bottom part where I had the the detail on the sleeves. Because that will get dry brush later to bring out those letterings. And the A's is almost the same color as the, the vinyl, so it's kind of hard to see. So I go by the feel of it and the look of it. So that's actually pretty close to where it needs to be. So I'm going to go in with some 220. And this will get sanded all the way down to probably 600, which will take primer perfectly. The primer will fill in all the scratches just fine. So I'm going to do the same thing on the other shoulder. I'm going to try it with Bondo instead, so that way I can get it to dry in a few minutes rather than 24 hours. I mean, Aza is great, but it, it does take 24 hours before you can sand it. Constantly feeling it in the air with my hands, my fingertips. Your fingertips are really sensitive, so they can feel things you can't see. Um, I used to paint cars, just constantly just running my hands over the surface to feel any errors in the surface or anything like that. So that looks really good. Feels pretty good, and you can kind of see. Um, I'm not sure if it's showing up in camera, but. Where the putty is, you see little shiny areas around it. That means you want to sand that area a little bit more because it's not feathered out all the way. So you take most of the putty off, but you want enough on there that you don't have to reapply the putty again. It's just, and if you can do it in one application, it's best. little transition right here from the arm down into the armpit it's a little tricky that was the part I was struggling with I was putting the A's on the other day I'm gonna stand under here just a little bit I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, um, got this sanding brush, this is, this has 320 on it, but it's barely used, so it's probably more like 400, it's been used quite a bit, so it's not as aggressive, so I've got to do this next, and you can see I'm just kind of, kind of hitting the whole area because it's soft and it's going to take to the shape of anything that goes over without destroying anything too much, too bad. Yeah, that looks really good. And then I'm gonna go down to, um, really need to order some more sanding sponges. The super fine are my favorite. The 3M super fine sanding sponges are my favorite. Um, they last really long. They're right about 500 grits. They say four to five, four to 600 grit. They're, I'd say they're about 400 grit. And as you use them, they get less effective. So then you can use them to do finer sanding. Just see now, you see here, this shoulder's nicely blended. Hopefully there isn't a bump there. If there's a bump there, I'll have to add a little more putty to it. I kind of feel a bump. I think I may have taken a little too much of the putty off. I can fill it in with some Bondo. I 
take it down a little bit with some more 80 grit. to put a little bit more in there. I think I took a little too much putty off and we'll just fill it with Bondo. So I'm gonna work on putting the other areas, getting them sanded down, and then uh, we'll throw some primer on these guys. Okay, so I'm working on getting all these things puttied and filled. It's taken a while, a couple hours, you know. It's been taking, you know, I've been working on this for a while. It's just trying to get everything to uh, work right. So um, what I'm doing now on Odo's, on Odo's head is I'm gonna um, put a little bit of gap around the neckline there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it in with some putty, but first I'm gonna do is I'm gonna coat his neck in uh, Vaseline and I'm, I'm almost ready to put down my first coat of primer I say first coat because more than likely after I prime it the first time I'll see some areas that need some improvement so I'm going to put down a good a liberal coat of petroleum jelly on, on his neckline here and then he'll get this well I just gave a cork a uh, a good scrub down with some soapy water and toothbrush. He's drying, getting ready for his first round of primer. So I'm going to put petroleum jelly around his neck. I'm going to mix up some of this uh, Evercoat. That's I'm about. I really need to throw this. Unfortunately, throw this out. It's um, it's the point where like it doesn't even come out of the container. It's just dried up over time. So I'm going to use it up a little bit because it's expensive. So like I said, I bought this container. I don't know, a couple years ago. Let me see here. So I'm just gonna get some of this out. My phone is ringing, potential fraud as usual, sales call. All right, so we're gonna get some of this ever cut out. My workbench is a mess right now because it always is when I'm doing this putty work stuff. So I just don't worry about cleaning it up until I'm done. And then I clean up the work area and then move on to the next stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna mix this up. I just got This. I'm actually gonna. Um, I found that if I scuff the vinyl up, this uh, silly putty sticks a little bit. Sticks a little better. So I'm gonna scuff up this neckline a little bit. I should have done this before I started mixing it up. Like that, and then I'm gonna just clean it off with some better. Lock it there and clean it off. I'm gonna take some of this putty. Uh, put it around the neckline. Most of this will get squeezed down into the body because I don't need a whole lot. I just want to close up that little gap that I'm seeing. Like this. So I got putty in there. I got Vaseline around his head. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this down all the way. Like that. I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit. Got some filler in his head. Yeah. Keep from moving it, and I'll be in good shape. I'm actually going to take this and clean it up. So I got a Q-tip with some thinner on it. Just kind of going around the neckline to clean up the majority of it. A 
up with thinner whenever I spilt it. I'm just going to let this set up for a few minutes. And then right before it's about to get 100% cured, I'll pull the head out and we should have a, a better fit around the neckline. But I want to paint the head separately so I can easier for painting and stuff like that. And I don't have to mask it off when I do the body. So uh, we'll pull it out here in a little bit and see what it looks like. Okay, so I took the head out and now I got a nice, even, nice fit of the head. So once this, this bondo dries 100%, it'll be a nice tight fit of the head. And you can see that most of it kind of went up into the head and it'll create a good fit. I put some red putty as I've been going around. I've been playing, putting some spot putty in some areas where I missed, so I gotta let that dry, sand that down, and then I'll probably I'll be ready to give him a bath and get some primer on these guys. Okay, so yesterday um, after I got done doing the putty work and stuff, I went ahead and threw on a a good coat of Style Rest primer. This is just the uh, it's called neutral color. I'm out of gray Style Rest, so I use this. And uh, I got some work to do still. Um, so this is the first round of primer. And just like with any other kit, the first round of primer will show us where we have to do some work. So I'm not sure it's gonna show up in camera, but I actually found some pinholes here in this foot. It looks like this, it's, it's in the vinyl, which I never thought vinyl would have pinholes. So got some pinholes there. I've got some just just even in the in the vinyl itself. There's some rough areas. So I'm gonna sand this down. I'm gonna sand this seam down a little bit here. Um, my putty work looks okay. I've got a few little areas where I need to go back and do some more. So yeah, we got some work to do. So first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna get out a, a super fine sanding sponge, and we're gonna give everything a good sanding. So this is like equivalent to 400 grit. I cleaned up my sandpaper drawer yesterday. I did some just basic studio maintenance. I cleaned up the desk and stuff. So, so this is a 3M super fine sanding sponge. It's equivalent to 400 or 500 grit sandpaper. And I'm gonna just go in here and I'm gonna give everything a, a good sanding. Now most of this primer is gonna come off, which is fine. Cause this is just basically just the first round to show any imperfections. And as I sand, if there's any little divots or anything in the surface, it'll show up. Now, when I was reading, going over the instructions for these guys, it says to only use an acrylic primer, which is kind of a bummer. I was hoping I could use um, some Krylon on these, but it says it won't, I'm not sure what kind of primer Krylon is. I'm not sure if it's a lacquer, or with enamel, but they're saying if you use a lacquer or an enamel primer on this, it won't dry. So I guess it's just the way vinyl reacts with those those uh, types of paints. So you can see most of the primer's coming off, but this is showing me any kind of rough areas that may need some attention. Lots, there's lots of sanding, <laughs> so this, I haven't it's been a while since I've done a kit, a kit kit. You know, all these things that come from China have 90% of the work done for you. Every, every once in a while, you go and, and got to fix something, but they do all this surface prep at the factory. So it's been a while since I've done, you know, done all this. So I, it's, it's just time consuming. You know, it takes a long time to get it right. because your, your final paint will show if you took the time to do all this. If you didn't, it's gonna show through. So I'm just gonna stand on cork here on camera. The hands actually look pretty good. This is um, Quark's hand. 
I got a little sanding to do on this one for Odo. So yeah, I'll just sand everything down. <clears throat> I'm hoping I can finish up whatever putty work I have to do on the arms with the, the glazing spot putty. But like right here, I'm not sure if you can see it, there's actually a, it looks like a seam line. Um, I'm not sure if vinyl, I didn't think vinyl had seams with those. But I'm gonna try to sand that out, smooth it out a little bit. It was right here. But by sanding, I can see where the primer's left. Let me turn on my exposure. It's getting kind of bright here. Um, I can um, sand until that's gone, and then I know that that should be taken care of. The vinyl does not sand easy, easily either, let me tell you. It's not really a sandable substance or material. It is to an extent. I'm gonna turn off autofocus because I'm sure. I'm not sure what kind of lens I need to get so where you don't hear the autofocus trying to focus all the time. Because I know you can hear it on the video. Because it's right next to the microphone, you can hear the motor. First round of primer, you pretty much sand 90% of it off. It's really just a guide to show you where you need to do some work. I don't think it'll take long to paint these guys. All the work is gonna be in the prep. The longest part of the paint will be Odo's shirt because it's very ornate. Not Odo, Quark, sorry. Quark, Quark shirt. this too. The nice thing about these sanding sponges is you can use them wet. They tend to wear out sooner if you use them wet, but um, I'm actually using water and not lacquer thinner. I've got a little water in here. I'm gonna put a towel down because it gets a little messy. But it keeps the dust down at least. Instead of dust, you just get a wet mess. And I did give this, give these pieces of light sanding before I primed too. I did sand the vinyl a little bit with one of these super fine sanding sponges. Basically just to give the primer a little something better to grip to. Now I did see some pinholes in this foot, but I'm not sure if it was in the primer or the, the vinyl, so.
This dial res, I like it a lot because it sands really easily. He doesn't, uh, Ken Badger, who owns Badger Airbrush, he's a buddy, he's a friend of mine. He doesn't advertise it as a sandable primer, but it sands very nicely, wet or dry. So I like it for that purpose because it's it sands very easily. Typically, primers will be advertised as a sandable primer if it's a sand, if it sands easily and it doesn't clog your paper and stuff like that. So I'm still I'm just still sanding the pants on work. I haven't even gotten to the torso yet. Someone made a comment on the video, uh, the first work in progress that these aren't readily assembled, like these aren't meant for beginner builders. And you know, it's like, it's like any other type of model. If you want to do it the best you can, you spend the time building, prepping, all that stuff. Um, I've never, like I've said, I, I own some vinyl kits. I've never actually built any of them. So I just know kind of what to do based on some videos I've seen and some friends of mine who've done vinyl kits gave me some advice and so again I don't want to say it's it's hard it's just time consuming okay so the pants look pretty good the boots look pretty good move up here now I put a lot of primer on the top here because that's where I held my putty work I'm going to stand real lightly on his shirt because it's got some details on it I don't want to mess up This color primer is actually a really good base coat for, especially for Odo because his colors are all kind of in the brown tan family. So, and it's good, it's a good base coat for their skin tones too. So I'll just continue using this primer. Okay, I'm just going to go real light on his arms here. So I don't want to mess up those details on the, on his uh, shirt. I had to give everything a bath in soapy water before I primed it. Yeah, I think we're gonna um, do a coat of the uh, Bondo spotting glaze putty, the red putty over the joints again. See if I can't even them out a little bit. Yeah, 
And there's a slight dip right there, so I'm going to see if I can... See, the problem is that the, the, the filler sands easier than the vinyl. So when you go to sand it and transdo the, the putty work, it's easy to over sand the, the filler. So just the prep work on these guys um, is like 20 hours, two, two and a half full days, two full days, 20 to 25 hours just to prep to build them and all that stuff. That's what it took me. I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe someone could do it faster. I don't know. By the time I'm done with it and get it ready for paint, it'll be 20 hours. But hopefully I'll have a really good surface for paint when I'm done. Okay, so that's pretty good there. I do need to kind of hit the shoulders again. Uh, his head actually looks pretty damn good. I don't know if I'm going to... I do see a little piece of trash in one of his ears here. Let me give it just a light once over. I'll prime it again before I spray paint. Just kind of wiping over it to get any little surface imperfections out. Again, I'll just give it up real quick. Actually, look pretty good. They do have some finely sculpted um, fingernails in there, so I don't want to sand those out. So I'm just gonna again get a real light sanding, which will get kind of any minor surface imperfections out. And then after I prime it again, they'll be good to go. This hand actually has a little defect in the vinyl. I noticed after I primed it, I'm just going to sand that out. Almost like, looks like a run in the vinyl, which is kind of weird. Sand Odo on camera, it's the same thing as cork, just I think Odo's arms came out a little bit better, and I think the reason is because when I was sanding, I'm gonna use a sanding stick. And I think I'll re-putty um, Quark's arms at the top and use sanding sticks. I was able to get a, a flatter uh, joint. So I think I'll do that on Quark's. So yeah, like 20 minutes of me sanding is very exciting. 
but it's a necessary step to get the best finish possible for paint. So a buddy of mine mentioned I should fill the um, Odo's sleeping chamber with clear resin and then I'd have sleeping Odo. <laughs> I have to look that up because I, I, I do remember I think now that he turns into like a liquid form and sleeps <laughs> in a liquid form. So maybe I should do that. My wife has some clear resin here I can I can use. about done here and then I'll turn the camera off and I'll go over Odo he's got a few little pinholes I got it I saw that I got to fill with some uh, spot putty but I gotta do that after I sand because the spot putty won't just stick to paint you gotta sand it it'll stick to paint if you sand it first so hopefully just a couple more hours of prep on these guys and then I can start shooting some paint today Maybe get their skin tones done. That'd be nice. I could probably get Odo's uniform painted pretty quickly. It's basically two colors. Maybe three. I think the boots are a different color, maybe. I have to look at the reference photos. Like I said, Quark will take a little time because he's got some pretty ornate decorations on his shirt and stuff. Alright, so that's sanding. <laughs> I'm going to continue and then we'll come back. Okay, so I think I'm finally in the home stretch on prep on these guys. Um, I went ahead and did another round of primer on everything. I had a little, um, when I went to go prime uh, Odo again, there was some water in his mouth that I missed when I gave him a, when I washed him off. Oh, my autofocus turned off. turned off. So I had a little drip of water, so I just sanded it down. I'll, I'll reprime that. I found a little pinhole into the top of his head, so I'll sand that, sand that down and reprime it. On Odo himself, I had just some very small pinholes still, so just some. There's some glazing putty there. We'll let that dry for a good 30, 45 minutes. Uh, we'll sand that down with 600. But I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but after sanding the the vinyl down and doing another coat of primer, it is much smoother. So uh, again, never work, have done finished a vinyl kit before. It does. It's kind of like working with resin. It may look smooth, but once you put primer on it, it doesn't look so hot. So you gotta. Smooth it down, give it another round of primer, and it's looking really good right now. So once those little areas dry, I'll sand it down, give it another round, those little spots of primer, and then uh, we'll be ready for paint. So I should be able to start painting today. On Quark, I went ahead and redid his shoulders. I re-sculpted them a little bit. They were a little too rounded, and I was still getting a bump between the arm and the body. So I just took some body filler again. And I, I built it up pretty high and using a sanding stick, I didn't film this, I made sure to sand uh, flat on the top and flat on the side and it created basically a sharp edge here for the shoulder and I slightly rounded it off with uh, some sandpaper. So now it looks more accurate to what his uniform is. And I put some glazing putty on there on the whole area just to kind of fill in any little uh, imperfections that might be in the surface. So I'll sand that down here. I put it on pretty thick and you're only supposed to put it on really thin because this air dries. So I'm going to let that sit for at least an hour before I try to sand that and see how it looks. And then we'll reprime uh, Quark and then he should be good to go for paint too. So this will be the end of this work in progress because it's just again sanding, priming, sanding, priming. And then the next work in progress will start laying some paint down. So a lot of prep on these guys, more than I anticipated because I, I thought resin would be a little easier to, to prep than resin. But it's pretty much the same process. <laughs> sand, fill, prime sand fill prime until you get the surface that you want you just do it over and over and over again and until you get where you want um, so it just goes to show you that sometimes even these little simple kits um, one six scale kits some many times take me longer than a quarter scale kit because especially if it's a garage kit because you're dealing with smaller areas it's harder to get in there and sand it's harder to blend some areas so some people like i have a couple uh pinup kits that i i, I own 
and people have asked me, well, how much would you charge to do one of those? I'm like, well, it's, you know, it could be seven, eight hundred dollars or more to do a one six scale kit because it just takes some of them take longer. They're more detailed, so it's kind of crazy how that works. But you know, that's what I do. I charge by the hour because um, it's just. But um, I think I think these guys, once I get the prep done, I think the painting will go fairly quick. Knock on wood, knocking on my head. Um, but yeah, the prep just took longer than anticipated. But they're looking good. Um, yeah, so it's interesting. I mean, uh, this makes me want to break out my other vinyl because I own a Joker. And those Star Wars kits I have are actually quarter scale vinyl kits. I thought they were one six scale, but they're actually quarter scale. I have Luke, I have Bubble Fett, I think I have C3PO. I've got a bunch. I think I have Han Solo. So maybe four of them. I don't know. So that's the end of this work in progress. Next one, uh, we'll start shooting some paint. So stay tuned for that.